You can make more profit in your handmade business if you can get a customer to buy from you again and again. But if you're having trouble getting them to come back and turn into repeat customers, watch this video. I'm going to share with you five easy ways to get more repeat buyers so you can make more sales and make more money without it being a lot of extra work for you. My name is May and I help makers, artists, and designers make a consistent income selling their handmade products online. One thing I want you to understand is there is a cost to making a sale in your shop. Whether that's a cost of your time or money that you've spent to get in front of your customers, that's still a cost. So let's say it costs $15 on average to get someone to buy from you and then they place a $40 order in your shop. That $15 could have been literal cash you've spent to get that sale, like if you use paid ads. Or it could also be $15 worth of your time that you spend posting on social media or talking to your potential customer on the phone or whatever it is. It's effort and time you spend that costs money. The beautiful thing about repeat customers is they cost a lot less to get after they've bought from you for the first time. Now it might even be $5 worth of money or time and effort to get them to come back and spend another $40. Repeat sales should make up a significant percentage of your business income. Around 30 to 50% of my sales are from repeat customers. And that's a great sign that people love your products. So my first tip for you is to implement some sort of loyalty program or points program so your customers are incentivized to buy again. I'm sure you're a part of a loyalty or points program yourself. I know I'm in at least two of them that I actively use. One of them is for 99 Ranch, which is an Asian grocery store near our house. And every time you buy groceries, we get some points and we've actually been able to get a couple of times where we got $10 off our entire bill because of those points. Now I'm also a part of the loyalty program at my favorite smoothie place. Every time I buy a smoothie, they put a little stamp on my loyalty card and when I've bought 10 smoothies, I get one free smoothie in my next order. So if you decide to put some sort of program like this in your shop, I have a few suggestions for you. First, make their first order appealing. Like maybe your program is simple where it's $1 translates into one point. And then maybe the rewards are like when you get to 100 points, you get a 10% off coupon code. So for the first order, if you make it so that your customers get an extra 50 points on top of their order, they're going to feel encouraged to spend more so they can get closer to that reward. There's actually a term for this and it's called gamification. It's like when you're playing a video game. People love that feeling of accomplishment when they level up and they get some rewards. There are some cool apps you can get to put this program in place. If you use Shopify, one app that has a lot of great reviews is Smile Rewards. What's great about it too is they have a free plan that you can start with. Now, I don't think every business model works well with loyalty points. I think you need to have a product that innately people feel like they want to collect. So if you already have that built-in quality where people naturally want to buy your products over and over again, a loyalty program can help increase that repeat customer rate. So for example, if you sell children's artwork, a loyalty program probably won't benefit you as much as, say, someone who sells tea or soap. Tip number two, if you're not using one yet, you really, really need to get your customers into an email list. If you do have an email list for your business, figure out how you can segment your email list so that you can send emails to just your previous buyers. This is a pretty basic and expected feature to have with any email system. So if yours can't do that, I recommend moving over to one that can. MailerLite is a good free option that can do this. This is so important to do because a huge percentage of your repeat sales will come from your email list if you do it right. To take this one step further, you should use autoresponders or automations. 
Those are basically a series of automated emails that get sent to people who've purchased from you before. You can make it so that one month after someone buys from you for the first time, you can send them an automated email where you're talking about another different product in your shop that you think they'll like. And if they don't buy then, you can set up your automation to wait two weeks and then send them another email. This time you can include a coupon code to incentivize them to buy again. Most handmade shop owners aren't doing this and it is so simple to do. And once you set it up, you don't have to do any work. It's literally setting it up and then forgetting about it and it works for you on autopilot. Okay, so now for tip number three, subscription or recurring products. If you don't yet have a subscription product, I highly recommend you start thinking about how you can create one. I only have one subscription product, my Necklace of the Month Club. I've been running this for the last six plus years now, and it makes up 50% of my income. It's crazy. It's super effective when you do it right. But mind you, I did have to revise my subscription once and redo it all over again with a completely different structure. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other video. Anyway, so subscription products are super popular these days. You might have heard of Stitch Fix or BarkBox, and you get a box every month of a few different things for a monthly fee. And it's just an automatic payment, like a Netflix subscription. The nature of subscriptions is it's usually a surprise for the customer. They don't know what they're getting. And just keep in mind, I don't want you to freak out and think that you have to include multiple of your own products in each box to each customer. You can just keep things simple. My necklace of the month club is just one surprise necklace per month because I can't do any more than that because the pricing just doesn't work out any other way. When people join your subscription and if it's good, they'll stay in it for at least a few months. What I love about subscriptions is it gives you that consistent income, which is really nice because we all know how much of a roller coaster running a business can be. And with normal one-off sales, you can't predict when that next sale is going to come in. Tip number four, sell a consumable product. Your business may already be like this naturally. Like maybe you sell soap, candles, food, dog treats, planners, stationery, skincare or makeup, things like that. A consumable product is something that gets used up over time. And if your customers love your products, when they run out of it or they use it all up, they're going to come back and buy from you again. I like to tell people that if I were to start a new business, I'd seriously think about how I could start, I could make a business that's selling primarily consumables. But okay, so what if your business doesn't sell consumables? Like for my own jewelry business, even though my charms look like food, they don't actually get eaten up. <laughs> um, but my jewelry is scented and the fragrances do disappear over time. So something I could do is sell the refills of the fragrance oils to my customers. But what about if say you sell art prints? I don't think it's totally crazy to put your art on products that are consumables like notepads or journals or greeting cards or stickers. This might be a good reason to get inspired to make a totally new product collection of consumables, but that still has your art on it. So everything in your shop is still cohesive and consistent. Tip number five, give amazing customer service. I am talking about like at a whole level where you go above and beyond, go the extra 10 miles for your customer. Especially, especially when something goes wrong with a person's order. This was something I learned many years ago. If you can turn an unhappy customer into a happy customer by giving really good customer service, that customer is going to be so much more loyal to you than a customer who just had a normal positive experience with your shop. And it makes sense, right? Like making the effort to right a wrong, even if it's not your customer's fault, even if it costs you more money to fix the problem, that shows your customer what kind of shop or brand you are. That's the kind of service that people will tell all their friends about. It's like you and your customer have been through a difficult situation and they're extra appreciative about being taken care of so well. 
Now, this is going to be hard for a lot of people to do because as shop owners, we're so close to our products and when we do customer service, it's so easy to be defensive or to take things personally. So I recommend when you do get that email that's like some sort of problem from a customer, don't respond to that email right away. Because if you do, you're going to say some pretty impulsive things that might feel good to say in that moment, but you're going to regret saying it. So what I suggest instead is to take a step away from your computer or from that email for like an hour. That way when you come back to it, you're not going to be responding from a position of emotion or impulse, but more from a place of objectivity. That's how you're going to be able to do your best at helping your customer with their situation. Don't let your ego or pride get in the way. This is not the time where you need to be right. The customer may not be right, and it could totally have been their fault, but be the bigger person and do everything you can to help them. It's like karma. Your actions will pay you back over and over again over the long term. So it's totally worthwhile to do and to go that extra mile. And if you're thinking about like situations where maybe the customer gave you the wrong shipping address and now their package is being returned to you, offer to ship it back to them again. I know it's not your fault and it's not USPS's fault. If you've priced your products correctly, you can afford to pay for shipping again out of your own pocket and still make a profit from this order. And if you don't make a profit from this order and you're just breaking even or making a little bit of a loss, think about it as a whole. The big picture, you will make a profit from all your other orders. These kinds of situations only happen like once every two to three dozen orders. It doesn't happen often. I say all of this to encourage you to just give the best service to your customers and to not come from that place of fear you're going to lose out. All right, that is all I have for you. Be sure to click on this next video to watch more handmade business tips. If you like this video and found it helpful, click the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so you'll be first to know when new videos come out. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching.